Right, Carl Munson here of the Good Morning Portugal show. Delighted to be talking to Tig James of British in Portugal. It is the 1st of January. Now, uh, Tig might have a sore head for two reasons. One, because it was New Year's Eve last night and because she's celebrating uh, receiving the MBE from His Majesty the King in Great Britain. So congratulations, Tig. How are you feeling this morning? Thank you very much. Um... I'm actually okay because, as you already know, but you, you, you watchers, listeners, whatever, probably don't. I drink very, very little just just because my body doesn't like it, and so I, I, but I am tired, and and that's partly obviously being out last night with friends, New Year's Eve, and and getting back late. Um, Celebration of the Algarve. Yeah, yeah. Went and watched the fireworks. Oh, super! Yeah. Which ones? Which ones were you looking at? The Albufeira ones. The Lagos ones. The Lagos ones, of course. Okay, yeah. well, this is great news. You've been awarded an MBE. And, and perhaps for, because we've got an international audience, we should let people know the significance of this. It means member of the British Empire, doesn't it? Uh, yes. You've been awarded this. You were nominated. Tell us about that process. When did you first find out about it? I first, and, and I can't tell you how bad this is, okay. Um, I first found out that I got an MBE on the 4th of December. All right, okay. But due, uh, to, the, but due to the honours list rules, the honours team's rules, you are sworn to strict secrecy uh. until 10.30 p.m. It's not even 10.30 a.m., 10.30 p.m. on the 29th of December. Okay. Because, oh. and then it's released to the press, and then it's, it's you know, and then, and then it sort of goes, and then you can tell people. I mean... One of the things that got me, because of course I got I got a phone call out of the blue from the ambassador, um, and I mean normally How I know. How cool is that though? Come on, isn't that great? <laughs> but it, but normally I know if I'm going to get them. You know, we sort of fix the time and sort of, you know, with with the embassy staff, I'll fix times and we'll re and, and there's reasons. Mm -hmm. But when you suddenly get on your phone call on on your phone embassy and you're going, ooh, the ambassador line one know what this is about what's this about and of course you, you, your head immediately goes to Ugh. Mm -hmm. you know what, it, yeah what exactly that's exactly what I thought what now what you now? know it turns out very good news uh nomination and then uh, you, you have been bestowed the honor of member of the British Empire, um, to give um, people who, around the world a sense of what that yeah. means. I mean, it's a pretty, pretty uh, a, a great order of uh, magnitude of award, isn't it? In the UK, it's pretty danged good, isn't it? Yes, yes. congratulations. Yeah. yeah, basically for yeah for people that aren't aware, it's basically things are submitted. I, I think, I mean, what they say is to the king, but I think it goes through obviously the honours team and whatever and you know people put you forward for an honour and support that and it, it's it's for actions over and above the norm I think is is the easiest way to explain it that people consider is over and above the norm um exceptional I think I read somewhere or Which you know what you've done right this this is and for those of uh, those people who, is, watch yeah. who don't know you have gone above and beyond and, and as it's yeah. screen there, unfailing and sterling service to British foreigners especially or maybe only let me just find this out from you uh post Brexit you've been coming to the aid of of uh, British folk in Portugal especially and dealing with some of the situations they found themselves in. Um, were you a helper to the British population, expat foreigner, immigrant population in Portugal before Brexit? No. Because it's, it's, so it all arose out of the post-Brexit situation. This all happened because the referendum happened in 2016. So it was a case of, you, you know, well, oh, oh, no, we, the, the people have voted to come out of the EU. What are they thinking? What does that mean? And of course, as you know, as a Brit, everybody was like, I've no idea. Yeah, right. Yeah, we didn't think no about idea. that. <laughs> so I then I then went around looking for somebody that would know. And of course, yeah. I got nowhere because yeah. nobody had a clue. And then what I did, there was this tiny, tiny little group on Facebook called British in Portugal. And I went on that and Rory Stewart, the other co-president, because I'm no co-president of it, the other co-president said, would you join the team? 
just saw me and just saw and said, join it. And I went, yeah, okay. So and that's your MBE material right there, I think. And, and so yeah. you were looking for somebody to help. Turns out you ended up helping everybody else. Well, it, what I realized very, very fast, firstly, like I said, nobody knew a thing. Secondly, um, I looked, went everywhere, got nowhere and thought, somebody's got to do something. And then I suddenly realized, of course, that was me. Excellent. And that's what you do, isn't it? If there's something needs doing and nobody's going to do it. And I mean, obviously, I had no idea what it would entail. No idea at all. Give us an idea of that, then, if you will. What does it entail? What has it been entailing that has attracted you this MBE? Well, I mean, initially, the Portuguese government were great. They got the gold star of all EU countries um, because they were right on top of the no deal with legislation when we thought Brexit might be a no deal, which would have been horrific, not just for anybody in the EU, but UK nationals in the EU, but in in people in the uk um they were right on top of it until it came to actually issuing us with our residency cards under the withdrawal agreement then they crashed and burned big time mm -hmm. absolutely and they just didn't do it and yeah. of course the withdrawal agreement says you have to, we have to have these cards everywhere we went in portugal in in, in the institutions were saying where's your card i'm going to have got one interesting and, but, and we were at this absolute, you know, sort of, what's the word? I can't remember the word, but, you, you know, where... An impact, perhaps. We, we were in limbo. We, we were just yeah. in, in this locked situation. The government knew they got to do it, but we're refusing. And we couldn't do anything about it. And right. I know it went to the very, very highest levels because I was submitting reports with them and doing whatever that this had got to be done. And the Portuguese government were going, yeah, yeah, we'll do it, and didn't. Just so on, on the highest level in terms of um, uh, what's it called diplomacy because of the long-standing relationship between Portugal and England as it was uh, the Treaty of Windsor and then subsequently UK there is this long-standing relationship which, and I think that was honoured at the diplomatic level very admirably as you say but then anyway, when it came down to grassroots in the offices issuing the paperwork and processing people that's when it all ground to a bit of a halt and you found yourself in almost full-time work presumably trying to help people with this stuff it, well the thing is when it came down to brass tacks they didn't do it right. and i know you know i um obviously I, I i knew the ambassador was was having constant meetings you know, in and out. I was having meetings. I was discussing the EU Commission, the EU Parliament, everywhere. And we got nowhere. And um, because they were just going, yeah, we know. We'll do it. And didn't. Nothing and then, of course, what happened was, was that I found um, people started to get arrested. There was two things that happened that, that, and I know I said to you before, I think, in an interview, I said it was one. It actually wasn't. It was two things happened. One was people started getting arrested at airports. And the other thing that happened was, of course, people not having these cards couldn't get health care. Mm -hmm. yeah. People with serious, potentially fatal terminal illnesses could not even get an aspirin. Right. And this you is know, life and death. We're talking about life and death and yeah. liberty here, aren't we? Some really yeah. fundamental issues which Absolutely. you've been at the forefront of sorting out. And I'm trying to remember. Yes, it was. And it was, I got a phone call from somebody in a detention cell in Germany. Yikes. I mean, that's terrifying. Absolutely. And it could have happened to any of us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely any of us. So, and, and I mean, at one point, I was actually asked to go to the EU Commission to, to deliver um, the information myself, to give a speech and whatever. And I flatly refused to get on a plane. I said, no, I'm not going to. I could get arrested. Oh, I'm not course, doing yes. it. Yeah, because you knew only too well what might happen. I'm not doing that. Um, anyway, so this this poor person were, was stuck in this detention cell at an airport in Germany. And I'll never forget it. I got this phone call, did everything I could do to sort it out this end. And by that point, I think it was about 10 o'clock at night, and I just got really angry. Mm. I got really, really angry. And I just, that's enough. I'm done now I'm that's it and I just hit the press button and that's what happened and I just hit it for three weeks three weeks 
did a did press interview after press interview after press interview. It hit the Portuguese national news. It hit um, it went everywhere, all over the world. You were in the and UK course, press as well, weren't you? Oh, Guardian Times. Yeah, yeah it, it hit absolutely everywhere. Why this worked, I don't know. But something triggered. But I was, you know, I was just, I think they just thought I'd never stop. <laughs> um, and anyway, miraculously, I mean, I, I started it at the beginning, I think, of August, I think it was around that time. Miraculously, at the end of August, we suddenly had a minister in charge of SEF. And suddenly we were having promises that the cards would now be, appointments would go out and cards would be issued. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. And we have you to thank for that. And I can only assume you haven't been issued with a similar award from the Portuguese government this year. No. Okay, all right. Well, let's get back I'm to the MBA. I'm still worried I might not get citizenship, let alone a war. Might... Have you left the country? Have you left, have you left the country since then? Since the, that incident? I, I, tell you what, I haven't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's the main reason we're talking to you today, of course. Congratulations. Yeah. It is a superb award. And yeah. uh, it um, means you possibly, as I understand it, well, you tell me, do you fly back to, you will need to leave the country and fly back to Buckingham Palace to be greeted by the king or a member of the royal family to have this honour bestowed upon you? I was given a choice. The ambassador oh. gave me a choice. And, and what he said was, <laughs> he said, you can either have it an investiture at the, um, the consulate in, in Portimao and have it presented by the ambassador, or you can go to Buckingham Palace and have it presented by a member of the royal family. It was such a hard decision. <laughs> I think you fancy the cucumber sandwich and a scone. Oh, Did you not? So, Buckingham Palace yeah. Garden there. Yeah, well, how so lovely for you. How lovely. And, yeah. and an excellent recognition of, I mean, this is years of work we're talking about, isn't it? You, you know, you mentioned, I think it began, it sort of crunched into being in, in about 2016, did you say? 2016, 2017. Yeah. It's, yeah. And, and of course, then because once once the withdrawal agreement came in and that was 2019 anyway i mean up to that point we were just lost and we were just still fighting for everything and what we could get and it, oh yeah well, so you're, only, you're only two years away from a 10-year anniversary since this all began it's extraordinary isn't it yeah. quite amazing as, as we go yeah. into 2024 so congratulations what does it mean to you personally how, you know how did you feel when you when you got the news I walked around in circles for 30 minutes. I, I was, you know, you know, when you, you have a phone call, and I'll tell you a funny story about this. You have a phone call and you go and you put the phone. Did that really? just happen? Yeah. Did that just happen? And, it, and it's so funny. And, and I'm so thankful the ambassador did this because 30 minutes after he called me, he sent me through a letter confirming it. Oh, how okay. lovely. Yes. So Standards. <laughs> You know, it was there. So, and I actually printed it off. I don't even know why I printed it off because why would you need to? But I did. I printed it off. So funny. And of course, and I went, and, and a bit later because this was about half past five, six o'clock at night. So I then sort of, you know, a few hours later went to bed. And of course, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning. Did that really happen? You need to look at the letter you know, to prove it to you. Pinch yeah. yourself and look at the letter. <laughs> I got it and read the letter. I, yeah, it happened. Okay. So I went back to bed. That was fine. Three hours later, did that really happen? Got up. And it's like my friend said to me, she said, why don't you just take the letter to bed? I said, I, I was in such a, a – did that happen? I said, it never even occurred to me. But, yeah, it was. Just, it just threw me. I was absolutely stunned. Okay, was, and we don't have checkbooks anymore, do we? So it's unlikely you're going to have Tig James MBE on your checkbook, on your Coots checkbook. Um, but um, – yeah, go on. And have it after your name. Right, absolutely. So the, you will be when you when you're making reservations in the Algarve for dinner, you can say on the phone, can't you? That will be a reservation for two, four, six, or eight for Tig James MBE, please. But you can do it on every document because it's yes, it is so passport and whatever. So it, I, I I'm still trying to get my head around that. Oh, because I mean I've got obviously other letters for degrees and stuff, but I I don't use those. So I don't know. Maybe um, this is the year when you should get them all together. Apply for planning permission yeah. for your new credit card or bank debit card that will have all of these initials on yeah. it. 
So yeah. congratulations. It's really brilliant that uh, you've got this. Well, is it going to affect, do you think, the work from here on in? I mean, presumably you didn't imagine to be working on this some eight years later, uh, still sorting things out. I mean, you will continue doing this work, presumably. Yeah, until it's done. We're, right. st we're still, we're, we still have people who do not have cards. Yeah. Okay. So the work continues. Uh, you have been rewarded. I mean, this is a, a, a voluntary post that you, I mean, you do this out of the goodness of your heart. And I think as well from our previous conversations, from an overwhelming sense of injustice that's driven you through all of this, right? Oh, it, yeah, it, and absolutely. It was, and I mean, you, you know, from what I can gather, I know I've mentioned this before as well, from what I can gather from the press, that, you know, Seth had no intention of giving us our cards until the um, until it disbanded and morphed into AMA. Mm -hmm. and I mean, and that has happened this year, the end of this year, middle of this year, wasn't it? It was and in 23, yeah. yeah. You know, and I've just found out as well that since September, they haven't been issuing any cards. <laughs> Nobody can get a residency card. So even if, and what I fought for, again, with all the people that haven't got cards to have interviews, they're having interviews, but then I get a card anyway because they're not printing them at the moment. I haven't since September. Okay. Extraordinary yeah. situation, oh. which doesn't look set to resolve anytime soon. They have other pressures, of course, having just uh, reformed themselves. Can I go back to what you were saying, though, about um, you know, how has it affected me? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, it must have changed your life quite drastically. I, I don't know if it's changed it. I said, but it's, I mean, it's the effect it's had on other people that has absolutely taken me by surprise. How do you mean? For instance, I had people last night who recognised me, who I didn't know, had no idea who they were, running up to me, throwing their arms around me, saying, congratulations. Of course, I knew what it was. And congratulations. We are so pleased for you. I had people come up with tears in their eyes who don't know me, who are so pleased. Mm. I've had I've had over 500 messages from people um, absolutely chuffed to bits and saying, but the, the over the overriding reason that people are so pleased um, and, and people keep telling me it, it made me cry. I'm like, wow. Is because what they've said is, is that it's so nice to see someone who actually deserved it. Yeah, right. the, That yeah. wasn't, that it wasn't because you knew somebody important. It wasn't because you're a Tory donor. You got it because you deserved it. And that has been, and, and I have just been, abs I felt absolutely, I still do feel overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm sure you do. And, and it's thoroughly yeah. well-deserved. And I think there is something... Um, because we can also talk about, I know you when you posted up about it on social media, you you did meet head on people's um, indifference about the honour and from where it comes and its origins and so yes. on. But the point here is about public service, isn't it? And and dealing with injustice and doing something about it, which I think is a great reason for you to be um, awarded and recognise publicly. What do you say about the um, the origins or or the you know the um, Monarchic is that the right adjective? I'm not sure, but you know the the, 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 the whole the whole backdrop. You know the the Beatles notably refused their their honours, didn't they? In, in um, so you're in good company for one thing. And Tony Blackburn, I have to say, uh, who got an OBE this year. What do you make of that? Of, of of that sort of political side of it? You see, for me, I have had staunch anti royalist anti honours list um, people. <laughs> write to me and say so pleased that somebody who deserved it okay right okay, yeah, that makes sense. is for actually got an honor that yeah. somebody and these are staunch anti royalist staunch anti empire um people that have written and they've just they are so pleased i mean the british it's, it's about isn't it invading it's about different countries it's about um slavery about the, all the bad connotations of the empire um because i mean especially on twitter what i did was i said you know for me i took it for what it was which is a simple finally a simple thank you for what i did and that's all i've taken it as it's at last i have a thank you from Thanks. the government from the king from whoever 
and that's why I accepted it because and, and I, official, I yeah, it an was. official recognition and and rightly so. Yeah. So excellent, excellent. Th and thank you for answering that question. Not everybody would, would they? <laughs> and the, the um, ambassador we mentioned, uh, Mr. Chris Sainty, of course, yes. who, who who you've been working with throughout this whole period. Is that right? From well, I've worked with the embassy. I've worked a few times with Chris. I've worked with, but it's mostly the other embassy staff. Um, yeah, usually the consul now. Um, they did have a citizen's rights officer, but the UK, which dealt with, because they realised that, you know, with all that was going on, especially in Portugal, but other countries in the EU as well, that they needed a specific nominated person in the embassy to help UK nationals who were affected by Brexit. Mm -hmm. So I dealt with the citizen's rights officer at the time, but um, then the UK government decided to withdraw funding for that. Bless. Oh. OK, well, I imagine you're going to be high on the uh, appointments list of the new. We have a new ambassador, don't we? Of course, Chris Sainty is going on to ask new. And I'm sure you'll be getting an invite to uh, Lisbon soon to meet the new ambassador. Um, who I, when, Do you know when they take up their post? Um, January. January. So they're coming in as well. What an exciting year ahead, Tig. So here you are in Portugal in 2024. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Let me just do that again. So here you are, Tig James, MBE, going into 2024. New ambassador. The Brexit, post-Brexit situation continue. You'll be continuing to fight and, and advocate and lobby on behalf of people finding themselves in difficult situations because of that in the Carnation yeah. Revolution year and an election year. How exciting is that? What would, what would you ideally like to see um, in this coming year? I would... I would ideally like to see, obviously, all the UK nationals sorted that, you know, that arrived pre-2021, um, for that to just be resolved. I'd, I'd, I'd also very, very much like to see the healthcare system sorted because people are dying. I, I can't. And, you know, the combination of the two things together for me, because it's affected, you know, people that I speak to, you know, regularly, um, not having cards, couldn't get healthcare, they got terminal illnesses, they would die. Oh, and that, you know, just try and get some of that sorted. And of course, with the fight on that at the moment, that of course affects everybody living in Portugal. Hopefully, it'll have a really good knock on effect um, for everybody if, if we can at least get some money diverted into the health system here to, to stop. You know, the, the, I mean, the health centres, it's not right what they do, that, you know, a lot of them are refusing UK nationals. Um, but I also, a tiny part of me understands it because they have to prioritise somewhere, but you can't be racist about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just not. It's just not on, but yeah. We'll so hopefully some of those things will, those very serious issues that uh, you've been fighting for for eight yeah. years now will be um, resolved to some extent and that uh, you'll have an easier job of it. And hopefully it will be um, receding in the rear view mirror in years to come. And uh, well done again. Congratulations, Tig. And uh, anybody who wants to send congratulations can presumably do that in the British in Portugal Facebook group. And that's yes. also the place if people do have an issue as well where they can um, present their, their, their situation and get help from you uh, in, in that particular forum. Yeah, absolutely. Thank okay. you very much. Well, a great start to the year. Uh, congrats. Yeah. All the best. And uh, Tig James MBE, I can't, uh, yes, um, maybe should I come for lunch in um, in, in the Algarve? We can uh, get a reservation. I, I, I won't do it without your permission. You've been to everybody's head, haven't you? You know, they can I, ring around. I, I know Tig James. James, James. Yeah, thanks a lot, Carl. Thanks Sorry, for that. Just ignore that last <laughs> minute, everybody. Cheers, yes. One guy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, bye for now and bon. bye. Bye. Merry Christmas!